temptation I can't shake my faith Cause when a heathen come running home I know you gonna love me You wake me up from my sleep Gonna love me more than enough Cause I know you gonna tell me That I'm close to your heart Gonna tell me that I'm not too far Gonna love me You wake me up from my sleep Gonna love me more than enough Cause I know you gonna tell me That I'm close to your heart Where 
am I going? Got too high, you feel like I'm roller coasting. It's just sometimes I forget that I was chosen. Can't waste my life, keep my head up, gotta focus. Done floating. Where am I going? Got too high, you feel like I'm roller coasting. It's just sometimes I forget that I was chosen. Can't waste my life, keep my head up, gotta focus. Done floating. I walked in the building, I made it Funny thing is, I'm back in the crib and it don't even feel like I made it Seeing Lecrae like me, my favorite Signing these papers, I'm looking at faces I used to see on the screen, my face on the screen Holy, welcome to the team, 116 I've been on my way until I hit the curb Making these moves, I'm putting in work It's been a week since I got in the work Every day I feel like it's getting worse Feeling the pressure to finish the verse Losing my trust in these people, it hurts Can't let a blessing turn into a curse Watch the pride, put your boy in a hearse Get a little ego, get a little ego. Hope you a hero, hope you a hero. Make a little hit, it's like a free throw. Yeah, yeah. I got a choice, give him the juice or give him the coy. Go deaf, tryna block out the noise. I realize I don't care as a voice. Where am I going? Got too high, you feel like I'm roller coasting. It's just sometimes I forget that I was chosen. Can't waste my life, keep my head up, gotta focus. Done floating. Where am I going? Got too high, you feel like I'm roller coasting. It's just sometimes I forget that I was chosen Can't waste my life, keep my head up, gotta focus Done floating yeah. Get this on my chest I feel like I lost the balance I feel like everything in the inside leading up and it happened They talking like Hovey on the scene, Hovey on the scene, listen, he rapping. They don't even know about the kid, know about my soul, know about my life, know about the loss, know about the weak, know about my home.
I don't know. But basically, here's what's the deal. They each have balloons that have color powder in it, and they have a jousting stick. Their object is to be to win this round. We're gonna do two rounds. We'll see if we do a third, hopefully not. But we'll do this round. The first one to get break both balloons wins the round. Here we go. Okay. It's about to get rocked. <laughs> Ready? Oh shoot, we're going. <laughs> oh shoot, we're going. <laughs> Ready? Set? Go! Ah! <laughs> oh. And go! Come on, Jim! Yeah! Oh, what are you doing? Come on! Ah. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, they're still going, bro. Oh, guys, no. No, no, no. Ah! That was freaking scary. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're still going, bro. I have never seen that look in a man's eyes, ever. I thought that I might die. Unfortunately, Matt epically lost round one, but this is his time for redemption, or Kyle's time for domination. <laughs> so here we go. Round two and three, two, one, battle! Balloon? <laughs> ah! 
Come on! Oh, oh see what happened! Oh. It's okay, I'll get him next time. Okay, we're back. Round three. Matt's got one. Kyle's got one. It all comes down to this. Wait, Tim, who did you say was supposed to win this one? Someone's gotta win it, it doesn't really matter. All right, here we I mean, go. It was planned because like one of us won one, one of us won the other, but like. Oh my gosh, just go, dude. Set, fight. Ah! And we're gonna clear answer, who's supposed to win? Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. What? Oh, Matt, you can't do that again. <laughs> Oh! You can't put him down! Who's gonna win it? That's right, you got both. Woo! Matt takes the win. Wait, who, who was supposed to win? I forget. I think it was me. Because oh. I won, baby! <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome to Fusion and Thrive Online. I am so glad that you're joining us tonight. I believe that God wants to speak to us in a really special way. But before we kind of jump into worship and the message for tonight, we are actually gonna go through some announcements. If you have not had the chance yet, go to our YouTube channel after a small groups tonight and look at our transform chats. We believe that as students, you guys are having conversations with your friends, maybe with family about different topics that are happening in your life, things like comparison, things like calling, things like the pressures of being in high school. And during these transform chats, we have student leaders and adult leaders who are talking about these topics and really talking about how they've struggled through them, where they found success in them, and maybe even where they failed, but have seen Jesus be faithful to them in the midst of that. So I really wanna encourage you. I believe that God wants to speak to you during uh, kind of those chats. So check that out if you haven't gotten the chance yet. Our second announcement for the night is that in two weeks, we are gonna be taking some time off of online programming. And we're doing that in order to redream and rethink of what we can do uh, for Fusion Online and for Thrive Online. And guys, we're excited to see what God has next for us as a community. So remember, in two weeks, not next week, not the week after, but in two weeks, I guess that's three weeks actually, we're gonna be taking some time uh, off of online programming to really just think and dream about what Fusion and Thrive Online will look like. So guys, we're thankful for you. We're thankful that you continue to press in, to dig into kind of what wasn't expected, but what has become our new normal. So now we're gonna head into a time of worship. So enjoy, lift your hands, praise God, sing as loud as you can because Jesus deserves it. Low, like the skies are wide Crashing down will bring the world to life Hope came dancing on an empty grave Death has lost its rule to the King of Grace Be the crown in the light and sound Be the fire burning inside out Be the love casting out all fear let your name move the atmosphere Move like the skies away Crashing down to bring the world to light Oh, came dancing on an empty grave Death is lost its rule to the King of Grace Be the crown in the light and sound Be the fire burning inside out Be the love casting out all fear 
let your name rule the atmosphere And we owe it all to Jesus Sing it all in shame to lead it Death in all its shame and the light and the light we see is Jesus and the air we breathe is freedom and the sound that knows no fear your love rules the atmosphere Wow, doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago that we were together at Black Rock playing games and hanging out? I have definitely missed getting to see your faces every week, but at the same time, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that we have to connect online. Um, I know it isn't quite the same as being in person and seeing each other face to face, and I can't wait for the day that we get to be together again but isn't it so incredible that we have the opportunity to keep on meeting together every single week? I wanna give a huge shout out to Tim and Zach and Andres and all of your incredible leaders um, for being flexible and for pouring so much of their hearts and time into doing Thrive and Fusion online. You guys are the best. Um, So before I jump into the message, I just wanna say, sometimes when I'm preparing a message um, to speak, I really feel like God gives me a specific word um, on my heart to share. And preparing for this message, I felt a similar way. Um, I believe that God wants to use me right now to um, speak to you and teach you something through the message tonight. So wherever you're at, whether you're sitting on your couch or in your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you are, um, tune in, gear up and get ready for what God wants to say to you right now tonight. So let's pray really quick before we dive in. Um, Lord God, I just want to commit this time to you right now. Um, Lord, I pray for everybody watching this and listening to me, um, seeing me on their screen. Um, I just pray for every heart, pray a blessing over each student and leader tuning in. Um, Lord, any word that I say that isn't right or isn't true, Lord, please just, um, redeem it and allow your truth to reign tonight. Um, we love you so much, Jesus, and we're excited for what you're going to do in your name. Amen. I had an awesome childhood home. I grew up in Trumbull. Shout out to all my Trumbull homies out there. Go Eagles. Um, And I loved my house so much. It was literally the only place I had ever lived for 18 years. This place was my home base. And through all my life, I have so many memories there. All the campouts in my backyard and the bonfires and the worship nights in my living room and the tire swing in the woods. And I could literally go on for so long about all of the things I love about my childhood home. That place was absolutely awesome, and I had so many memories there. And I changed schools over the years, and I had different friendships kind of come and go, people um, going in and out of my life. But my house, my house was constant. It was this home base where I felt comfortable and safe, and I knew every single corner of that house because I had spent my entire life there. Then one day, I think you can maybe see where this is going, but I was driving down my road like I had a million times before. And as I got to the end of my driveway, I saw the dreaded for sale sign. 
I knew my parents had been wanting to move for a while, so it wasn't, I didn't completely catch me off guard, but I was still pretty caught off guard. Um, and I remember this moment I was sitting in my driveway, um, didn't get out of my car yet. And I had a lot of like uncertainty in my heart. And I realized that once my parents moved, my life wouldn't really look the same anymore. It would kind of start a new chapter for me. Um, and I know, I know it's just a house. There are bigger things to happen in life and I don't mean to be over dramatic, but I really began to think, where are they moving? Are they moving far? Will I ever be in this town again where I've spent my entire life? And if my parents are downsizing, does that mean I have to move out and be a real life adult? Um, and maybe you've had a similar moment in your life where all of a sudden your future, your normal, your plans are suddenly up in the air and out the window. Maybe your parents sat you down and told you that you're moving. Or maybe, let me be real with you guys, maybe you found out that your mom and dad were separating, or maybe someone close to you moved away, or maybe one of your parents lost their job, or for you seniors, maybe you didn't get into the college that you had been planning and dreaming for. If you haven't experienced a moment like this before, when your plans are suddenly up in the air and you don't know what the future will hold, um, I think for all of us in some way, this pandemic has caused life to be a little bit uncertain. Um, Maybe someone got laid off. Maybe you know someone who has the virus. Maybe you just feel afraid. Maybe you're not sure if your friend group will be the same when this is all over. Or maybe you're just scared that life will never go back to how it was before. Anyway, I think that COVID-19 has caused us all in some way, big or small, to feel afraid and unsure of what's ahead and uncertain of so many things. And this feeling of uncertainty, it reminds me of a group of people in the Bible called the Israelites. And you've probably heard of them. They're a very important group of people in the Bible. Um, they were a nation that was literally chosen by God. And where we're picking up from, they had just been freed from being slaves in Egypt. So God sent this man named Moses. He went, freed them, and God began to lead them out of slavery to a land that he promised for them. So I'm reading from Exodus 13, verses 17 through 18. And it says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. They weren't ready, basically. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. So basically, what this is saying is that God took them on a long road instead of the shortest distance to the land that he had promised for the Israelite people. And if we take a look at a map, the shorter road through the Philistine country that I was talking about would have taken about 11 days to get there. Um, instead, God takes the Israelites southeast, the opposite direction, deeper into the wilderness on a route that would actually take them two years to finally get to the promised land. And if you know the story well, you know that they end up spending 40 years in the desert and there's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. But the original route that God took them on took about two years to complete to get to the promised land. And the way that the Israelites knew which direction to walk was because God led them through a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the nighttime. And I'm not sure what this might have looked like. So imagine with me for a second. Imagine a huge desert wilderness and thousands of people, this Israelite nation in the wilderness and God in a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire. Um, and the pillar of fire was or pillar of cloud and pillar of fire was literally always there. It never left. It says by day, the Lord went ahead of them um, in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Now, the Israelites definitely felt uncertain and uneasy during this time in the wilderness. They didn't know what was in their future. They didn't really know where they were going. And life suddenly looked a lot different than what they were used to. And they actually missed their life before when they were enslaved. Things were hard. Things were unknown in the wilderness. And they were full of fear and uneasiness. But God knew what was ahead. And God never stopped guiding them. He was literally always there. He was right there so clearly, day and night, guiding them and lighting up the way that they had to walk. They might not have been able to know what the future held. They might have been feeling like they were going to be in the desert forever, but God knew and he was with them. And the story of the Israelites is true and historical, so I want to be careful not to like over apply it to our lives. But I can't help but read this stuff 
and be reminded of what we're going through right now through this pandemic. Do you feel like maybe we're wandering through the desert in a desert season right now of life? I have no idea how long this pandemic is going to last. I have no idea when life is going to go back to normal. I don't know if life will ever go back to normal. Or maybe it will. I literally don't know. But can I tell you something that's brought me so much peace? Just like the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire never left, so God is with us and there to guide us, even as we walk with uneasiness, fear, or uncertainty. In Nehemiah 9, 19 through 20, this is written years and years later, but they're talking about the Israelites during this time. And it says, because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. We don't know how long this will last, and we don't know what life will look like on the other side. But you know what we do know? Amidst all of the uncertainty, God is faithful. We serve a God who does know what is ahead, and we need to remember who he is and that he hears us. So that's my first point. God is faithful to guide us in the seasons of uncertainty. And COVID-19, it might have changed your plans, might have brought you into a wilderness. It might have shifted your family dynamic or changed your friend groups or your financial situation or whatever it is. And for your juniors and seniors, maybe it affected your future college plans. But I'll say it again. Amidst all the uncertainty, we know a God who is faithful. Remember who he is know that he hears you, trust that he is with you and there to guide you. So back to the Israelites, God leads them through the Red Sea. Maybe you've heard that story. It's a pretty cool one. And on the other side, they're still in the wilderness between a place called Elam and Sinai. And it's been over a month of wandering in the wilderness since they've been freed from slavery. So we pick up in Exodus chapter 16. This is just a couple chapters later. And it says, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into the wilderness to starve us to death. First of all, the Israelites here are kind of fooling themselves. They're remembering Egypt as if it was like this place of rest and eating all they want. But you guys, that's not the truth of what their lives were like in Egypt. They were slaves when they were there. They were, Egypt was thriving off of the backs of their hard work and they were not free. They were an oppressed people. So here, as they complain and talk about the pots filled with meat and the bread that, uh, eating all the bread that they wanted, they're really lying to themselves about the past and trying to find someone to blame for the hunger that they're feeling now. So they point their fingers at Moses and Aaron because they're hungry, because they're tired and because things aren't going exactly how they imagined. And doesn't that kind of sound like us too right now? Maybe it's just me. Um, but I think for me, I, I tend to look back at my life pre-quarantine and I fool myself thinking that life was perfect then. And just the other day, as I was preparing to um, be giving this talk right now, I realized that I've kind of been lying to myself about the struggles that I was having pre-quarantine. Um, I was really struggling for many months to be finding like good community. Um, since I've graduated from high school, I haven't really had like a tight knit circle of friends anymore to walk with and to grow with. And it's, it really has been a struggle, but there are so many days during quarantine, especially on the really lonely and isolating days. When I look back on my life before and I say, oh, to be around people again, or, oh, to have the community that I had before. And I forget the days that I was actually really struggling with loneliness. Even then I'm kind of like the Israelites who looked back on their time in slavery thinking that they were never hungry or thirsty then. Do you know what God says in response to the grumbling and complaining of the Israelites? In the next verse, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. And a few verses later, it says, That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. Picture this. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed blanketed the ground. When they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Each family had just what it needed. So what was God's response to the angsty, dishonest, and melodramatic complaints of his chosen people? He provides bread from heaven, just enough bread for today. 
We serve a God who provides. In Nehemiah 9, talking about the Israelites, it said that God sustained them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. We serve a God who can sustain us through difficulty. He provides for our needs and with him, we have enough for today. He isn't a God who's far. He doesn't tune out our cries and our struggles, but he turns his ear towards us and in his infinite grace, Even through our complaining and grumbling, he provides exactly what we need. So for me, what realizing this looks like is that maybe I need to look around at the community God is providing for me right now, even through this season of quarantine. Yes, I might not be able to gather with my friends at church or hang out with my friends in in their homes or whatever it may be, but God is opening doors and he's providing people in my life right now to connect with, even through FaceTime and Zoom people to grow with and to walk with. So think about this. What has been a hard thing for you during quarantine? What are you lacking and what do you miss? God hears and he sees your struggle and he wants to give you exactly what you need, just enough for today. Lastly, I want to look at a verse that I read in the beginning about God leading the Israelites in the opposite direction of the promised land. So I read this before, but I'll read it again. Um, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. And remember how I mentioned that it was that God actually brought the Israelites on a two year journey rather than an 11 day journey. I think he might have done that because he knew that the Israelites weren't ready. He didn't accidentally bring them in the opposite direction. He didn't aimlessly lead them into the wilderness just for the fun of it. But God had purpose in leading them um, into the wilderness. They weren't ready for the promised land, and he wanted to prepare them to teach them and test them before they were ready. In the same way, God is not leading you through a wilderness season right now by accident. He hasn't abandoned you, and he has purpose and meaning for you here. In Hosea 2, talking about Israel, it says, Therefore, I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. We might feel like we're moving in the opposite direction of where we're supposed to go. We might feel like we're going to be in this wilderness forever. But maybe God wants to tenderly speak to you something in this season that you could not have learned otherwise. He isn't quarantined in heaven, socially distanced from us. He is a God who knows your heart, he knows what's going on in your life, and he wants you to follow him. Maybe, just maybe, he has something that he wants to teach you, something he's preparing you for, or something that he wants to heal you from. He has purpose and meaning for you in this wilderness season. You don't have to just kill time and count down the days until the next phase of bands has been lifted and you can have a little bit more freedom. I challenge you to listen to put down your TikTok and your video games, to set aside your latest hobby you've been doing to keep yourself busy. Turn to God and take the time to listen to what he might have to say to you. And maybe he's gonna challenge you to start setting aside time every single morning to spend with him. Maybe he wants you to call up your small group leader this week and share with them what you're going through and ask for prayer and for wisdom. And maybe it means he wants you to take time to just sit and listen to him, rest in his presence, ask him to speak. Remember that he isn't randomly leading us into a season of the unknown, but that in his perfection and in his goodness, he has purpose and wants to say something to you. The wilderness might be a place of isolation, fear, and unknown, you guys. You might feel anxious. You might feel uncertain. And if you're not feeling those things now through COVID-19 and this whole pandemic, I can assure you at some point in your life, you will feel uncertain and your plans will go up in the air. But we have a truth that we can cling to in the midst of uncertainty. We have a light to guide us even in the darkest wilderness, and that is God. He is a God who is faithful to guide you. He's a God who hears you and will provide for your needs today and he has purpose and meaning for you in this season. Let's pray. Um, Lord God, I am just so grateful for um, the things that you're teaching us and the ways that you're moving and working through this season. God, and I pray a blessing over each small group as we break up into Zoom groups tonight. Um, I pray that 
people will have the freedom to be vulnerable and to share um, their thoughts and what you're teaching them through this time. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you so much in advance for what you're going to do tonight. In your name, amen. Bye, you guys. Bye.